Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. A couple of things. One, if you haven't downloaded all my studies, uh, feel free to do it. I don't copyright anything. If you want to load it to uh, different social media sites, go for it. Uh, there's going to come a day when Bible stuff is illegal. Somebody from Germany told me that uh, there was a lady in a with a Korean restaurant that uh, posted some Bible verses on the wall of her restaurant, and she got in trouble. Ooh. You know, it's it's coming. I mean, it's 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 almost here. Really. You know, it's So, download whatever if you feel like it, you know. Just remember something, I'm, you know, I'm not charging anything for this stuff. So, uh, you know, <laughs> you've heard the old saying, you get what you pay for. Well, Jesus, uh, I think Jesus said, uh, freely you have received, freely give. Well, there you go. So put away some Bibles, King James, while you have the chance. Dollar Store uh, has King James Bibles for a dollar. I got quite a few of them, really. Uh, print's kind of small, you know. Um uh, Jeff, you know who you are. You sent me a nice Bible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a really nice one, too. Um, so that's one thing. Now, um, this is going to be on the life of Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A. Um, not sure if all of you would know it, but E-L is a contraction kind of it, and it has reference to uh, the Lord. Perhaps you've heard the word Elohim. And if memory serves me correctly, in if it's in Genesis, Elohim is a plural noun. You know, for example, in Genesis, it says, let us make man in our image. Well, Lord's not talking to the angels. Okay? I mean, it's just the way it is. So, E L O H I M if memory serves me correctly. I'm I'm not looking all this stuff up, but just kind of like doing it from memory. But um, the like Elijah E L I Eli Ja J A H. His his whole name is a contraction for the Lord. Uh, you've heard of Jehovah. Uh, that's you know. Yeah, people say Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahovah, Yahweh. Uh, they're guessing. I mean, at least I believe they're guessing because I don't think anybody knows exactly how to pronounce. The name of the Lord. I really don't. I mean, they might know. I mean, I might be wrong, but I'm just saying, you know, and I'm not dogmatic dogmatic about it. Wolf, wolf. Um, yeah. But E-L, anytime you see an E-L in a name, like Beth L, uh, there's a town called, or a city called Beth L. Beth means house. And E-L meant Lord, so house of the Lord, or Lord's house. So if you see Elijah or Elisha, you know that has reference to the Lord. So, I did an hour and 40 minute study on the life of Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. And if I remember, I'll put a link in the 
comments or and or the description uh, box. And Elijah is one of the only two people in the Bible that never died. Him and Enoch, they're the only two people in the Bible that never died. They were both taken to heaven. And Elijah's definitely coming back to confront the beast and the false prophet. Which is why I think it's a, it's a fairly decent study. Um, when I went to, uh, when I was in Bible college, we had to write a report on a one of the Lord's uh, one of the prophets in the Bible. So I picked Elijah. You know, a good way to uh, learn is you know study something out. So yeah, I wrote a big big report. I think it was like ten or twelve pages long, and uh, and then I used that for my. Uh, my study for the hour and 40 minutes. But Elijah's coming back in the end days. And I suspect that the false prophet is also going to call himself Elijah, trying to mimic messianic prophecies. So there's a good chance there's going to be two Elijahs running around, both being able to do miracles, uh, being able to bring fire down from the sky, Two of them. But uh, the Muslims also have the idea that there's going to be a, a false Messiah that comes and then the true Messiah comes. But I don't believe they're referring to Christ. I really don't. I suspect, uh, this is just, I'm just throwing this out there as a possibility, that there'll be a, a false Antichrist before the real Antichrist comes. That's what I'm guessing. I think there's going to be two Antichrists, just like there's going to be two Elijahs, probably. And then, Whoever the second witness is, I'm guessing Enoch. Some people say Moses. I'm not dogmatic about it. Wolf, wolf. But um, their bodies are going to lie in the street for like three days. Three days, three and a half days, something like that. And then they're going to be called up to heaven. So if you're interested, watch the hour and 40 minute uh, Bible study where I cover all that. And yes, I know that there are people that will tell you, oh, well, John the Baptist was really Elijah. Yeah, but you know what? John the Baptist told everybody, no, I'm not Elijah. And if he was Elijah, he would have known he was Elijah. The Bible says he came in the spirit and power of Elijah. And if John the Baptist was Elijah, well, then reincarnation's true, which it's not. Because John the Baptist was a little baby, and Elijah never died. No, the Bible says he came in the spirit and power of Elijah. When Jesus said that John the Baptist was Elijah, he was, you know, it was a figure of speech. My opinion. With that being said, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19, where we're going to read uh, about Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, and how he took over for Elijah. So, 1 Kings chapter 19. And verse 1, And Ahab told Jezebel... Now remember, Ahab was a bad news bear. And as bad as he was, Jezebel was worse. He was probably, Ahab 
is in the running for being the worst king that Israel ever had. He's in the running. I'd say he's in the top three or bottom three. I don't know. And if you don't know the story about what Elijah had done, well, listen to the hour and 40 minute study. Because I, I go into some pretty good detail. And Ahab, King Ahab, told Queen Jezebel, and by the way, she was, um, I'm 99.9% .9 sure she was a Canaanite. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the, all the prophets with the sword. Well, the false prophets. The prophets of Baal, the, you know, uh, matter of fact, Jezebel's name is, uh, when you look into it, it's Je uh, it's like Jezebel, Jezebel. And the prophets of Baal or Bel. Sometimes they miss, they, they not misspell, but, uh, you know, you got different pronunciations in different parts of the Bible. Like if you go down to South Florida, some people call the islands in the Caribbean. Sometimes they call them the islands in the Caribbean. The, the rabbit, the rabbit. You know, there's different ways to pronounce it. And sometimes it's slightly different spelled. Matter of fact, there was oftentimes three or four different ways to spell the same word in English. And it wasn't until um, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, which is a tremendous reference book, by the way, that uh, they standardized how to spell words. I mean, honor, H-O-N-O-R. You know, if you were teaching English overseas and you spelled honor, H-O-N-O-R, uh, you might have people say, well, you don't know how to spell. They're like, what? Yeah, because if you were teaching Oxford to Cambridge English, it's H-O-N-O-U-R. And they do the same thing with color, C-O-L-O-U-R. But you know those Brits, they don't know how to spell. I, I'm joking, I'm joking. So, you know, sometimes Baal is spelled B-A-A-L, other times B-E-L. Uh, so when you look at words, sometimes the meaning of the word uh, is inside the word. Like E-L-I-J-A-H. You got two different words there that has reference to the Lord. And then Jezebel, she's got a reference, B-E-L, uh, has reference to her Lord, which is Satanism. So, so Ahab told Jezebel that Elijah had killed all her false prophets with the sword. Killed them dead. Yay! Score one for Elijah. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods, s, plural, gods, s, can you hear that hiss of Satan? So let the gods, plural, do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So she's threatening him, saying, Oh, yeah? What you did to my prophets, I'm going to do to you. You're dead, buddy, as soon as I get a chance to kill you. Verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. He was running for his life and came to Beersheba. I wonder if that's Budweiser Sheba, right? No, Beersheba. Which belongeth to Judah... And left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And 
he requested for himself that he might die. Can you imagine that? God's prophet goes into the wilderness and asks the Lord to take his life away. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. He was depressed because he had just shown Israel a whole bunch, you know, miracles. Uh, there was the, uh, the fire came down from heaven and took uh, his sacrifice. And he killed all the prophets of Baal or Baal. Killed them all. Well, at least most of them, if not all of them. But was there a great revival? No. No, there wasn't. There was not a great, great revival. So he was depressed. Really, when you study clinical depression, Elijah's the poster boy. He's depressed. Verse 5. So he goes out into the wilderness and he has to die. Verse 5, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, let's see, did I read verse 4? Yeah. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, there an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake, bacon on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. That's depression. You just want to sleep. You know, you just don't want to deal with life. Um, been there, done that. Uh, didn't get the uh, antidepressants from the uh, uh, Church of Satan doctor. Didn't get a t-shirt either. So, Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And the angel of the Lord, maybe not always, but sometimes the angel of the Lord has reference, I believe, to Jesus before he was uh, of the flesh. You will find that um, sometimes the angel of the Lord speaks for the Lord in the first person. And he couldn't do that unless he was God, all, you know, part of God Almighty. So, and I got a Bible study on that too, if you're interested. Oh, I just backed up all my files. Today's April 27. 2021, I just backed up all my files. I'm not going to lose them again if I can help it, God willing. But um, after that little fiasco in uh, Arkansas, where the con man and the thief and the liar uh, kept my computer along with everything else, may the Lord reward him swiftly. But uh, I lost, I thought I lost all my studies. But um, thanks to some listeners, I asked them for the uh, old stuff back that I'd sent them on drives and was able to put them on my new computer that somebody was kind enough to mail me uh, years ago. Thank you very much. She doesn't listen anymore, but which is too bad, but that's all right. Um, I'm, I have over 1,500, over 1,500 Bible studies. Many of them are an hour long, and most of them are well over 30 minutes long. So, yeah, figure out how much, how much time that is. That's a 
That's a lot of, a lot of studies. So, Angel of the Lord, if you're interested. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. Can you imagine a meal that sustains you for 40 days and 40 nights? You know, I could do a Bible study almost on that. How long was the flood of Noah? Wasn't it 40 days and 40 nights? When Jesus went into the wilderness, how long, you know, at the beginning of his uh, ministry, after he was baptized of uh John in the River Jordan. Was that not 40 days and 40 nights? Yep, Matthew 4, chapter 4 and verse 2. And when he, Jesus, had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Genesis 7, 12. Noah and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. What about Moses? Deuteronomy 9.11 And it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. The Ten Commandments, the covenant. Yeah. So, you know, there you go. How long did Israel wander in the wilderness? Uh, well, Amos 5.25. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you could do a Bible study just on forty, right? Um, in Acts 7.30, and when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him, Moses, in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. So Moses was 40 years, uh, had left Egypt, you know. And uh, then the Lord appeared, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire in the bush. 40. A lot of 40s in the Bible. A lot. In Luke 4, 2, Jesus, speaking of Jesus, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in the days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward a hungered. So 40 days, Jesus was, um, you know, tempted of the devil. In Jonah 3, 4, you know, Jonah, he went to Nineveh. Uh, and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Acts chapter 1. Here's a good one. Verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day he, in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days. 
So when Jesus was ro risen from the dead, he hung out with uh, everybody for 40 days. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So, you know, there's a lot of 40s in the Bible. Well, let's see, where was I? 1 Kings 19, verse 8. And he, Elijah, arose and did eat and drink and went into the strength of the meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? You know, what are you doing here, Elijah? Verse 10. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it away. You know, you could just about read this today. Today's headlines. There's very few. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars. Do you know that in England, they're taking the churches and turning them into mosques? Because there's nobody, they don't attend churches. There's no people attending the churches, but the mosques are full. Can you imagine? For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Sometimes you have to be really quiet to hear the voice of the Lord. And I'm a hypocrite because I don't always do the things that I teach, but I try not to be like the Pharisees. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle. I believe a mantle was like a shoulder covering, like an animal skin. Uh, it was something the prophets would wear. And he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way 
to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. Remember, Ahab and Jezebel, they're king and queen of Israel. But God's telling Elijah here, you'll anoint Jehu. Now, who is Jehu? He's one of the uh, top commanders of Jezebel's and Ahab's army. He's like captain of the captain of the guard, I guess you could say. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, the son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. So you're gonna you're gonna make a new king over Israel, and you're going to anoint Elisha to be the prophet to take your place. Verse 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay. Hmm. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Now I believe Syria and the Assyrians were maybe not exactly all the same people, but they were related. I'm not sure if the Syrians were part of the, the Assyrians or if the Assyrians were part of Syria. Uh, sort of like, you know, Texas is part of the United States, but all the United States isn't part of Texas. They were related people. And the Assyrians uh, came in and took Israel captive. Let's see, I, if my memory serves me correctly, and I could be wrong, I think Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. And then Damascus was capital of Syria. You know, it would be like uh, Austin's capital of Texas and Washington, D.C. is capital of, you know, District of Columbia, the goddess of the uh, United Socialist States of America, the USSA. Yeah. So, and it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay. So the, the, those that escape from the uh, Syrians shall the king of Israel, Jehu, the new king, kill. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. So that's a three, three swords there. I would say that the Lord is not very happy with Israel, northern Israel. Read Jeremiah 3, 8. God divorced Israel about somewhere around this time. So Elijah's, you know, unhappy. He thinks he's the only, the only uh, uh, faithful person in all of Israel. But what does the Lord say? Verse 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. Now, Baal's just a uh, generic word that means Lord. And it became so associated with Satanism that the Lord said, Don't call me that anymore. 
In the book of Hosea, verse 2, I'm sorry, chapter 2 and verse 16. And it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt, and shalt call me no more Baali, B-A-A-L-I, or Baali. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, ish has reference to man. What is ish with an I on the end? What does that mean? I don't know. But I honestly think it has reference to um, Christ when he said he called himself the son of man. That thou shalt call me Ishai. And as somebody pointed out, uh, do you know, you've heard of the British, Brit-ish? Brit means covenant, and ish means man. British actually means man of the covenant, or covenant man. Danish, or Danish, D-A-N-I-S-H, uh, means the man of Dan, or, um, you know, Dan man. So, there's going to come a day when they're going to call the Lord Ishai, and he says, and shalt call me no more Baali. Don't, don't call me by Baal anymore, Baal anymore. Don't call me that. It Because it became so associated with Satanism. So, verse 18, 1 Kings 19 Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So he departed thence and found Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A. You got Elijah and Elisha. I know, it sounds almost alike. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. I don't know. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. Why twelve? Hmm. Why twelve? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ah, I wonder if it has anything to do with the twelve tribes of Israel. Twelve apostles. Twelve gates to New Jerusalem. Yeah, just a coincidence, right? So, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him? So Elijah walks by this guy and throws his uh, prophet's clothing on him, his mantle. It's kind of like a shoulder covering with animal skins. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. So I guess they had some kind of a celebration here. Because Elisha, S-H-A, S-H-A, knew full well that he was going to be a prophet of the Lord. He knew, he knew the whole deal. So, verse, uh, 1 Kings chapter 20. Oh, listen to this. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together. Now remember, um, Elijah, J-A-H, is going to uh, anoint a new king over Syria, remember? And uh, let's see, where was that? 
Oh, yeah. Uh, 1 Kings 19, verse 15. It says, Anoint Heziel to be king over Syria. But now you got uh, Ben-Hadab, who is the present king. All right, so 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together. You know, he's gathering his army. And there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots, and he went up and besieged Samaria and warred against it. Now remember, Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. Remember when the uh, you-know-whos accused Jesus of being a Samaritan? So, and he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto him, Thus saith Ben-Hadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine. Thy wives also and thy children, even the goodliest, are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine in all that I have. And the messengers came again and said, Thus saith Ben-Hadab, saying, Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold, and thy wives and thy children. Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thine house and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. So, you know, we're going to come... And take a look, and everything you got, we it's ours, buddy boy. Verse 7. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold, and I denied him not. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. You know, don't listen to this guy. Wherefore he said unto the messengers of Ben-Hadab, Tell my lord the king, All that thou didst send for to thy servant at the first I will do, but this thing I may not do. And the messengers departed and brought him word again. And Ben-Hadab sent unto him and said, The gods, the gods, you know, the, the serpents, uh, gods, yeah, plural. The gods do so unto me, and more also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handfuls for all the people that follow me. So I, I'm guessing here that he's saying, oh yeah, you look at all these grains of sand? Well, each grain of sand is going to represent a man that I'm bringing to destroy you. Uh, you're living in a desert, you know? And the king of Israel answered him and said, Tell him, Let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off. In other words, uh, you know, a guy that's going to battle, you know, you don't want to boast before you go to battle. You boast after the battle because uh, you never know how things are going to work out. You know, you know, uh, the guy that puts on his uh, armor, well, I'm going to kick some rear end today. Well, you might die in battle. You never know. So that's basically what he's saying. Verse 12, and it came to pass when Ben-Hadab heard this message as he was drinking, he and the kings in the pavilions, that he said unto his servants, Set yourselves in array, and they set themselves in array against the city. Array just means a battle formation. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel, saying, Thus, saying the, thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into thine hand this day, 
and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And Ahad said, By whom? And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Even by the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, Who shall order the battle? And he answered, Thou. And he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces, and they were two hundred and thirty-two. And after them he numbered all the people, even all the children of Israel, being seven thousand. And they went out at noon, but Ben-Hadab was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions, he and the kings, the thirty and two kings that helped him. And the young men of the princes of the provinces went out first, and Ben-Hadab sent out, and they told him, saying, There are men come out of Samaria. And he said, Whether they be come out for peace, take them alive, or whether they be come out for war, take them alive. So, you know, no matter if they are coming for a peace party or if they're coming to fight, you know, take them alive. Don't, uh, you know, just take them prisoner. So these young men of the, uh, of the princes of the provinces came out of the city and the army which followed them. And they slew everyone as man and the Syrians fled and Israel pursued after them. And Ben-Hadad, ben the king of Syria, escaped on an horse with the horsemen. And the king of Israel went out and smote the horses and chariots and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter. Sounds like the uh, Lord's giving them a second chance here. And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go, strengthen thyself and mark and see what thou doest, for at the return of the year the king of Syria will come up against thee. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, Well, their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they. Oh yeah, they had the gods of the hills, and we got the gods of the plains. You know, the valleys. So we'll have our gods be stronger than their gods. They don't know about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but uh, hey. Verse 24, And do this thing, take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their rooms, and number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot, and we will fight against them in the plain. Surely we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened unto their voice and did so. And it came to pass at the return of the year that Ben-Hadab numbered the Syrians and went up to Aphek to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel numbered and were all present and went against them. And the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the country. Oh yeah, like two little flocks of goats or sheep. Well, goats. But the Syrians filled the countryside, you know. Verse 28. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, Because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but he is not God of the valleys. Oh, yeah. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude into thine hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You know, God's giving Israel another chance here. Well, that's because the Syrians were bragging, oh, well, we got, we got our God of the plains is stronger than their God of the hills. We're going to kick their rear ends. Verse 29. And they pitched over, and they pitched one over against the other seven days, and it was so that in the seventh day the battle was joined, and the children of Israel slew of the Syrians an hundred thousand footmen in one day. That's a heck of a large army, people. A hundred thousand footmen in one day slew that many. 
But the rest fled to Aphek, into the city, and there a wall fell upon twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left, and Ben-Hadab fled and came into the city into an inner chamber. So not only were a hundred thousand footmen uh, killed, but twenty-seven thousand uh, died when the wall fell on them. Boy, that's a that's a pretty good sized army to lose, you know. Um, and his servant said unto him, Behold, now we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our own on our loins and ropes upon our heads and go out to the king of Israel peradventure he will save thy life verse 32 so they girded sackcloth on their loins and put ropes on their heads um, and came to the king of Israel and said thy servant Ben Hadab saith I pray thee let me live and he said is he yet alive he is my brother Huh. King of Israel saying, he is my brother, huh? Now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him, and he and did hastily catch it. And they said, Thy brother Ben Hadab. Then he said, Go ye, bring him. Then Ben Hadab came forth to him, and he caused him to come up into the chariot. And Ben Hadad said unto him, the cities which my father took from thy father, I will restore, and thou shalt make streets for thee in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria. Then said Ahab, I will send thee away with this covenant. So he made a covenant with him and sent him away. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor, in the word of the Lord, smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. That's a strange one, huh? You know, smite me, hit me. S hit me, I pray thee. You know, smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Then said he unto him, because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. And he found another man and said, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him, so that in smiting he wounded him. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way, and disguised himself with ashes upon his face. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me, and said, Keep this man. If by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. Uh, so basically, when you were given a charge of a prisoner and that prisoner got away, you were put to death or you had to pay a talent of silver. A talent of silver is approximately 70 pounds. That's a lot of silver, people. That's a lot of silver. That's about 32 kilograms for those of you in Europe. Verse 40. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be, thyself hast decided it. And he hasted, hasted and took the ashes away from his face. And the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophets. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction. Wow! Therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. 
And the king of Israel went to his house heavy and displeased and came to Samaria. See, Ahab made a big boo-boo. He was supposed to kill Ben-Hadab. Now remember, the other guy was supposed to become uh, the king of Syria. You know how many times the Lord gave Ahab chances to repent? A lot. A lot. Did he? No. Would he listen? No. All right, everybody. I guess this is going to be the end of part one. Uh, this is going to be... Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, there's like three chapters uh, before we get to where Elisha, E-L-I-S-H-A, takes over for Elijah, E-L-I-J-A-H. But I cover that in the um, hour and 40 minute study. If anybody's interested, that would be a good, uh, I would listen to that first before I even listen to this one. Elijah's, he's my favorite prophet, uh, without a doubt. He is it just, you know, I can relate to him. I really can. So, this will be the end of part one. And then uh, I'll uh, start off on part two where Elijah takes over for Elijah. Boy, that sounds confusing, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, Elijah shall go to heaven in a whirlwind on a chariot of fire with a whirlwind up to God and uh, his uh, I guess his uh, well some people would say sidekick sort of like uh, Batman and Robin right and then Robin becomes Batman's gone and then Robin becomes Nightwing boy if you know what I'm talking about yeah um Alrighty, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.